Well, it's that time of year again. Let's do it. It's time to look at PLA. Did you like that? State of PLA. PLA play... Never mind. So things have changed since this time last year, quite a lot actually. There's a lot of new manufacturers and some old ones have disappeared. Um, I think we all know why things have changed more this last year than, than normally, but let's move on. One thing I want to say up front though is that things seem to have improved a lot. This time last year there were a lot more filaments that were poor quality. Or perhaps I've just been lucky. None of the filaments I'm about to cover are unprintable. Well, I mean, maybe one. But that said, some stand head and shoulders above others for final quality and finish, and some of them are just really good value. I'm going to add a disclaimer here to say that this is something I'm, I'm avoiding top tenning here, because I'm not arrogant enough to think that I can judge filament, and nor am I able to try nearly all the types, colours and brands available. It's important to know that this is just my findings. I hope you find them useful. But yeah, we're, we're not doing top 10. Why would we? I hate top 10s. But let's get going. First up, Eolas. I like Eolas because it's food safe and being made in Italy, I'm fairly confident that this is true. All the certificates and stuff are available. Uh, the colour of the red I tried this year is really unusual too. And the finish and stability when bridging is really good. I'm a big fan. If the price is right, then this will be one that I will always grab. Next is Aerion. This isn't a new brand, in fact it was the first filament I ever had about maybe three years ago, but they seem a lot more common now when you search. I guess everyone likes it. Sorry, I'll get my coat. It's become my new workhorse based solely on the price. Uh, it prints fine, there's no issues, it's never caused a blockage that I can recall over maybe five reels and various colours. It's definitely one for general purpose printing. If it's on offer, especially below about £18, then grab some. Now I want to interrupt the video for a moment to have a short rant, don't worry it won't take long. To my mind there's two different types of companies to buy PLA from and this is a gross oversimplification but you have the factories who make the PLA and they sell it directly under their own brand name. And then you have the second way which is the factories that just sell generic PLA which is made in an unknown factory and it just gets rebranded. The thing I've noticed though is that when a generic brand name sells PLA, sometimes, but not always, it can be a total mix and a lot more risky uh, to buy from that brand. My advice is either to buy a direct brand name, which you know is a factory name, uh, which you can still buy from another reseller, uh, or if you buy a rebadge name, just make sure it's one you can trust that you've used a lot, like I'll mention one later, um, you can buy this either. I just thought it was important to draw the distinction here because it seems like most PLA filaments fall into one or other category. Now Iono, this is the case in point, this is an Amazon owned brand, although I can't say I understand how the, the branding works here, but the filament is very inconsistent and I would guess it's because the manufacturers are different. I've had a black filament from Iono um, which blocked the nozzle almost every time. It was a year ago, uh, so it's not available now. but. I did have to throw that one away, it's the only real filament I've had to just chuck out. But what is available now under Iono brand, it, I find it still varies a lot. For example, the white PLA Plus you can see here, I'm just not impressed with. I wouldn't recommend it, the finish is not is not satisfactory for me, especially considering it's a PLA Plus you expect it to be better, and it's not. However, the Iono colour change filament it gets a place of its own because it's amazing. Look, watch what happens when I put a hairdryer on it. And this did go out of stock for a while, but I noticed if you look on the, the picture, it's actually, now, it's actually now available again. And this is really cool. And I, I would recommend this very specific one, presuming they don't change the manufacturer. I think this might be made by CC3D, but I couldn't, I couldn't back that up. Um, this is an EV that I printed. Look how good quality that is, though. I mean, you couldn't fault that at all. Um, the colour change functionality is actually really cool because um, stick it on a heatsink or anything warm and you can see the colour kind of propagates up as it, as it gets hotter. I mean, there's nothing not to like about that, is there really? 
and also when you're printing it, if you print it with a cold bed like I have here, you can see the bottom has gradually got colder as the top is still being laid down in, in green. Again, that's that's really cool. And this, interestingly, this could be used for diagnostics. This is why you don't print on a cold bed. I don't normally do it. I was just trying to do it for the pictures. You could see it failed because it lost adhesion. Entirely expected. Entirely whatever. Amolan. This is some of the most expensive filament I've ever bought. The glow-in-the-dark stuff is over £30 a kilogram. You can tell I'm quite cheapskate because I just don't normally pay this kind of price for filament. Um, and that price, £30, doesn't even include the price of a new nozzle when you're done printing with it. Because in case you didn't know, glow-in-the-dark filament is abrasive and apparently it wears nozzles out quite fast. Which I haven't really printed that much, so I've not really noticed. And I'm I'm only printing it on an already broken nozzle anyway, because I, I I'm not stupid. I know how this is going down. Anyway, the glow in the dark stuff it does work okay. It's a multicolor glow in the dark thing, and it it does. Um, I'll try and put a picture up here. I can't do it until it gets dark, but I'll try and overlay a picture of that. Uh, you have to charge it with a UV torch, or it works better if you do, because it it just you know UV charges these things better. I didn't find it outstanding in any way, but I don't find glow-in-the-dark stuff ever that exciting. Um, perhaps it's just me. The army green colour, which is officially called olive green, I'm actually quite impressed with. It looks bad on camera, but that's because it's really small. I've printed these things on a 0.2mm nozzle. Uh, for example, look at the tiny man in the benchy for scale. On to Sunlu. This is a classic example of a manufacturer selling directly under their own name. I've had no issues whatsoever with Sunlu. In fact, I think they might be my favourite brand overall. The red shiny filament here is also one of my favourites, and you, you can't complain that that Benchy, can you? It's come out really well. It's worth mentioning that Sunlu also sells under the brand name 3D Warhorse, or apparently 3D Hero. I realise I've just contradicted myself. It's a it's a brand name selling under another another name, but don't overthink it. Uh, I've not tried the latter 3D Hero. I don't even know if it's any different because the photos show 3D Warhorse. But 3D Warhorse is I have tried and it's good stuff. It's just the same as Sunlu. Any Sunlu filament I see, I will snap it up if it's on offer, and it does occasionally dip below 18 pounds a reel. At which point I will definitely pounce on that. Next up is Newly. I really like Newly, so much so that I will say if you want a silk metallic filament, then just go for Newly. There's nothing not to like about this stuff. It's reliable and it's really, really, really shiny. But uh, buy it when it's on sale for around 18 or 19 pounds. I really like the copper, which is the darker of the two you can see here on the bottom. By the way, you can print this stuff at normal temperatures. I just throw it through at 200 degrees C. It doesn't lose any shininess. Finally, we're on to my old workhorse, Technology Outlet. I've been using this since I started out 3D printing, and sadly it's become a lot less available, uh, at least on Amazon anyway. It's still out there though, and I'd recommend keeping it on your watch list if the price becomes acceptable. You can buy it directly from their website too. I suspect it's only available in the UK because they're a UK company, but maybe they ship to Europe, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's a reseller, but the quality has been very consistent for me, and the price is generally right. I've paid as low as £15 a reel for this stuff, which is an absolute bargain. I must have printed tens of reels of various colours. That said, I think it might be the end of the line for me, mainly with, with this brand, unless it comes back to more available and the price comes back down to what it was. Uh, for the time being, I'm just using Airy One from now on. We'll see how that goes. Now I have some bonus content, don't click away yet, I've got two pieces of advice. Advice piece number one is get yourself a cheap label maker. It doesn't matter which, it doesn't matter how you're making these labels, you could even write them out on, you know, with a pen. Um, label the sides of your boxes, it's so much easier to pick up the right reel without having to hunt through the boxes. Um, it's so hard to read what's, you know, sometimes you've just got a tiny sticker on the back and you have to pull the boxes out. Just, you know, just label the sides of the boxes, trust me, it's worth it. Advice number two is store your filament in these cheap vacuum storage bags. They're meant for clothes, but they work really well for filament. If you tuck it in behind while you take the air out, it will conform enough to fit back in the box, and it's airtight and dust-free. Some bags work out to be slightly faulty and may let some air in, but it doesn't seem to matter. They still work well enough for me, at least. 
there's now starting to be some of these made specifically for 3D filament too. Um, I'll review them later. I've got some on the way. I don't know what the price is like, whether they're more expensive or not. But I did just want to point out that I thought of this first. I have been doing this for two years. I should have patented it, but whatever. Anyway, that's your lot. That's the end of the video. Thank you for sticking around this far. And remember to subscribe. Um, that's it. Bye.